Good morning to members of the media who are with us in person and those joining online. Allow me to acknowledge colleague minister without portfolio from OPM in charge of information, Minister Morgan, Press Secretary Naomi Francis, senior team from the NWC, WRA, and indeed the Met Services. I thank Minister Morgan for the opportunity to provide an update through this press conference, or press briefing rather, to address the current meteorological drought which Jamaica is experiencing. With us, as mentioned in my welcome, are members from agencies within MEGJEC, including the Met Services, WRA, and NWC. They are supported by senior members of staff of MEGJEC. It is well known that Jamaica's biomodal rainfall patterns consist of two peak periods with higher values of rainfall and corresponding periods of lower, lower rainfall. The primary peak occurs in October and secondary peak in May. During the period February to March and the month of July, the lowest amounts of rainfall are typically experienced. This is based on long-term reports. However, as we know, deviations from the pattern do occur from year to year. It is no secret that Jamaica is in the throes of the worst drought since 2014. Jamaica started experiencing reduced rainfall from as early as October last year. However, the reduction in rainfall worsened after that. In November of 2022, we experienced 62% of our 30-year 30 30 average in rainfall. In December, that declined to 47%. In January 23, 2023, that figure declined to 32% of 30-year rainfall. In February, it declined further again to 28% of our 30-year average in rainfall. Now, there was some rebound in March where we received 90% of 30-year rainfall, but this is not necessarily evenly spread. The eastern section of the island had no parish receiving more than 60% of its 30-year rainfall. And to note, St. Thomas and Portland, and indeed Kingston, started seeing reductions in 30-year rainfall from as far back as August of last year. So I think that has to be understood and that has to set the context for the issue that we face. In February of this year, the Prime Minister provided a comprehensive update on the situation and detailed the government's response. The Met Service and NWC teams are here to field questions this morning for technical issues. I, we have presentations that we can share with members of the media that have particular statistics, some which would be too laborious to go through this morning, but the teams are here to field specific questions. The fact is, when you have a month where you get 28% of 30-year rainfall, all water systems are impacted and impacted severely. There is no country in the world, there is no state in the US that is unaffected when they have rainfall in this, in this level. However, the government did not sit back and not respond. In February, persons should recall that the Prime Minister instructed that $150 million be made available for drought mitigation. That was broken down as follows. $35 million went to the Ministry of Local Government to facilitate trucking by municipalities. This is ongoing. $20 million was made available for the purchase of black tanks to support communities worst affected. $95 million was made available to NWC for trucking within the utility footprint and to critical infrastructure, including schools, hospitals, health centers, post offices, and police stations. This process is ongoing. The drought response, however, did not stop there. It took into consideration the impact on our farmers and understanding that they too were particularly badly impacted. Through the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, $110 million was also made available for drought mitigation. That process is ongoing and I understand the intent is to increase it, but I'll allow Minister Charles to touch on that at a later date. These programs have indeed eased much of the pressure in many of the communities nationally. 
It is to be noted, and as previously stated, this is not the be-all. This was the initial emergency response as allocated at the end of last fiscal year. It is the intention of the Ministry to convene the Drought Management Committee early next week to do an assessment, looking at all the stakeholders within the Integrated Water Management Council, to ensure that we have a full feel of which systems have recovered, which have not, and what the impact of the current mitigation measures are. After that meeting, I intend to report to the Cabinet, and if there is need for stronger conservation measures, we will recommend it to the Cabinet. If there is need for increased allocations, we will make the request to the Ministry of Finance, but that will be post our Drought Management Committee meeting of next week. We are pleading, ladies and gentlemen, I will ask the members of the media to assist us with this plea. We are pleading with citizens to be circumspect with their use of the precious commodity at this time. We are asking you to desist from watering lawns and certainly to desist from washing cars for now. Now, what should also be clear, ladies and gentlemen, is that the climate is indeed changing. Our weather, weather patterns are indeed shifting, and some have shifted. Just this morning, I saw an article posted where even trade in the, the Panama Canal is now being affected because of drought. The lakes that supply the fresh water in that space are lower than normal. Jamaica is not being spared. We can expect longer periods of intense drought and indeed periods of intense rainfall. This is precisely why this government has been investing at an unprecedented rate, certainly in the infrastructure of our water sector. This is targeted at improving resilience and the capacity of the varying agencies, and we are working around the clock to ensure that this is indeed realized. It is important to note, and especially in the context of drought, colleagues and members of the media should recall that I believe it was in November of last year that the NWC added eight new trucks to its fleet to facilitate the resilience by increasing its trucking capacity. This year, the NWC will purchase a further eight that will carry our fleet, I believe, to 32. Now, trucking is always a last-ditch effort and done in times of crisis. It is, the most, it is the least efficient, rather, method of getting water to persons. So it is done when we absolutely have to, when you are doing work in a community, when there is fallout from drought or other such issues. But this isn't the be-all and end-all. It is well known and documented that there are communities which are disproportionately affected by not being within the utility footprint. The drought is also now affecting these communities disproportionately because they don't have reliable water through their rainwater harvesting efforts or from the springs that they, they draw from. We can expect with current rainfall levels that there still will be further impact on small systems, many of which run by municipalities, several of which just done at a community level. It is for this reason the Prime Minister in his budget speech announced that 50,000 black tanks will be made available to citizens in areas most in need over the next three years. We have updated the country, I think, recently that 13,000 of these tanks we will, start, we will commence distribution of that in July. Now, these tanks will simply not just be given out, and we will come with a full detailed program at, at the time of program launch. But to note, it will be accompanied with the appropriate guttering to facilitate rainwater harvesting. We will be facilitating training of community individuals to do installation and providing a stipend to them in partnering with the Heart and Hope program. This program will significantly increase the water resilience, especially in communities outside of the utility footprint of the NWC and in communities affected by some of the oldest infrastructure that we have that affects their delivery. Last year, the NWC invested four billion Jamaican dollars. That was invested in communities across the length and breadth of Jamaica. The map can be provided to any members of the media who wish to use it. That was unprecedented. And it is for that reason we were not forced to commence lockoffs last year with the declining rainfall. There are two projects I'd like to highlight this morning before I describe the, the Capital Works program, which will support further resilience. The first is one that I think the NWC 
is very proud to have gotten it to this point. Last year, December, I think the first week in December, we signed a contract for the development of a water treatment plant at Content St. Catherine. This plant will commence construction in July of this year. To note, it will provide 15 million gallons of water to the corporate area daily. That would be sufficient that when complete, if you have a drought of this level, of this nature, with this level of rainfall, you would not have water disruption in supplying Kingston and St. Andrew. Nothing of any consequence. This is a major national investment that the NWC, through a PPP, will make into the resilience in the water supply of Kingston, St. Andrew, and indeed, soon to be parish of Portmore. So that is investment one that takes into consideration the climate in, that we face, or the changing climate that we face. Investment number two, which is particularly important, and one that I um, believe ultimately the NWC will even have to do academic study to support other developing nations on, is the NRW efforts that have been made. The NRW program, which started, I believe, in late 2015, would have cut leaks and cut non-revenue water in Kingston from 71% to 38%. And correct me if I'm wrong, VP, in 2015, Kingston was using 50 million gallons of water per day, give or take. Before the drought started, Kingston and St. Andrew was using 35 million gallons of water a day, meaning we had stopped the leaks and theft of over 15 million gallons a day. It is for that reason, again, why we didn't have to have lock-offs for Christmas, why we didn't start strict measures in January. So the investments in capital infrastructure are adequately preparing the country to deal with the extended periods of drought that will come. Now, there are other initiatives and some major ones that the Prime Minister would have announced, including the Mahogany Vale Dam, which will significantly increase the resilience in the eastern end of the island. It also includes the Pedro Plains Irrigation Project, which will significantly increase the resilience in southern St. Elizabeth and indeed southern Manchester for farmers in those areas. But what I'm getting at, colleagues and ladies and gentlemen, is that this investment program is underway, has been underway for some time, and we will indeed build in the resilience that we need to deal with drought conditions going forward. Now, it's not an overnight fix. We know there's been a chronic level of underinvestment in the NWC over the last 40 years. We are correcting that. The management team and board of NWC are working around the clock to correct many of the issues that precede their tenure there. We do note that because of the drought and because of the aging infrastructure, there have been some challenges in recent times. We ask citizens for their understanding and we assure them that we are working around the clock but more importantly, we're investing the revenue of NWC and indeed tax dollars to ensure that this resilience is built in and that eventually this is a thing of the past. I thank you.